start formulating a plan. And, you know, for this someone, former you know, principal knows the scramble plan, when a lot of teachers call in sick. You know, do I combine classes? Do I cancel music for the day? Uh, will I have to teach a class? Uh, will I have to cancel prep uh, prep time for teachers? And the kids feel the effect of it. When those trusting relationships are negatively impacted, uh, we tend to see some very, you know, um, concerning things. We see changes in behavior. The Ontario-based advocacy group People for Education surveyed more than 1,000 principals in the province who painted a grim picture of just how bad the situation is. 24% of elementary and 35% of secondary schools report facing daily shortages in teaching staff. And it's not just in Ontario. We are having evidence surfacing from across the country. This education professor says while there were shortages before the pandemic, COVID-19 made the situation worse. So if there was this group who were close to retirement who sought early retirement, so that reduced the number of available teachers in schools. Equally, uh, teachers who had recently retired, who in a typical situation would return to supply or substitute teach once or twice or three times a week, they were not returning into schools during COVID because they didn't want to put themselves at risk. And we had our meeting with the uh, MJ schools yesterday. Just this February, Newfoundland and Labrador brought together both the teachers and government officials to tackle the problem. We do have some housing units available in some of our communities for our teachers and in others. We do a housing stipend which gives them a, a portion towards their rent. But even there the teacher union said in a statement the government's efforts fell short underfunding key problem areas like packed classrooms and violence in schools. As teacher shortages proves to be an equation few know how to solve. Deanna Sumanak-Johnson, CBC News, Toronto.